Hey, what's up everyone? So, you've seen the title and the thumbnail. This week, we're going to talk about the differences between Swift syntaxes that look a bit similar, but actually carry a different meaning. And so, let's start with the first of these syntaxes, which is the difference between the keywords static and class. I've just pasted some code. As you can see in this code, I've implemented a simple class. And inside that class, I've defined two methods, a static method and a class method. And so now the question that I want to answer is what is actually the difference between the keyword static and class when they are used in the declaration of either a method or a property? At first glance, it might actually seem like these two keywords have the same meaning because if I try to call my two methods, as you can see, both call sites look exactly similar, meaning that I am calling either Either a static method or a class method by using the name of the type in which the method is declared. So where does the difference between these two keywords actually lies? To answer this question, I'm going to implement a subclass of my class. And now inside my subclass, I'm going to attempt to override each of my two methods. And as you can see, we now have our answer because when I attempt to override my static method, I have a compiler error which tells me cannot override static method. And on the other and you can see that I can totally override a class method. And so this is the difference between a static and a class method. Class methods can be overridden in subclasses, whereas static methods cannot be overridden in subclasses. And now that we've solved the mystery for this first syntax, let's move on to the next one. And for this second syntax, I want to talk about the differences between the operator equal equal and the operator equal equal equal. As you can see, I've implemented a simple class. So it's a class that represents a user and this user has a name. Then I'm going to make this class user conform to equitable. As you can see, in order to conform the class to equitable, I have to implement the operator equal equal. After that, I'm going to instantiate two instances of user. And as you can see, both these instances store the same state. And finally, I'm going to compare these two instances, the first time using the equal equal operator and the second time using the equal 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 operator. Then I'm going to run my code and we are going to see what do these two operators return as a result of the comparison. So my code has been executed. And as you can see in the console, the first operator, so equal equal has returned true and the second operator has returned false. And so now the question is, why do these two operators behave differently? And the answer is that these two operators actually implement a different kind of equality. The first operator equal equal implements an equality of state, meaning that it's going to test whether the two instances store the same state and it does so through the conformance of the type to equitable. So actually, when I call this operator, as you can imagine, this is this static function that is being called. And this second operator right here, so equal equal equal, it tests for a different equality, which is the equality of instances, meaning that it's going to test whether or not the two variables refer to the same instance in memory. And in my case here, it's not the case because even though both user1 and user2 refer to instances with the same state, they also refer to two different instances. And so that's why when we use the operator equal, 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 it returns false. And as you can imagine, if I were to create a new variable user3 that would refer to the same instance than user2 and then compare the two variables using the equal, equal operator, it would return true. I'm going to launch my code just to make sure that indeed it does. And as you can see, it indeed does. When we use the equal equal operator on variables that refer to the same instances, it does return true. And so we've now also solved the question of what's the difference between equal equal and equal equal equal. Equal equal tests for equality using the conformance to equitable, while the operator equal 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 tests for equality by comparing the addresses in memory of the instances. And now let's move on to the third and final syntax. And for the third syntax, I want to talk about the difference between the method flat map and compact map. As you can see, I've implemented an array of strings, and now I'm going to try to transform this array, and I'm going to implement two different kinds of transformations. For the first transformation, I want to iterate over the strings stored in my array and I want to try and attempt to parse them as an integer. And for my second transformation, once again, I want to iterate over the strings in my array and I want to transform each one of them in an array of their characters. As you can see, I've implemented both of these transformations using the method map. 
But if I try to use the result of the transformation, we are going to see that maybe map is not the best function for this kind of transformation. So I'm going to print both arrays to the console and we're going to see what do they actually contain. As you can see, the first array contains nil values. So actually, the result of my call to map here is an array of optional integers. And as for the second transformation, as you can see, I get an array that contains object called string unicode scalar view. And what's important to understand here is that this type is basically a kind of a collection. So we've basically gotten as a result for our transformation an array that contains other arrays. And so while these two results are valid, they might not actually be what I expect. What I would have liked to have would be for the first transformation to have an array of just integers and I would like the nil values to be removed and for the second transformation I would just like to have an array of all the characters and so I don't want to have an array of arrays. And as you can imagine in order to achieve this goal we are going to have to use other transformation methods than map. So let's begin with the first transformation. For this transformation instead of just using the method map I'm going to use an alternate method which is called compact map. As you can see the rest of my code still builds successfully Successfully, so it does show that compact map is indeed very similar to map. But there's one important difference, which is that compact map only works with transform closures that returns optionals. And the reason for it is that compact map will call this closure on every element in my array, and then it will discard all the nil values. So if I run my code again, we are going to see in the console that this time we will have an array of integers and all the nil values will have been discarded. So let's run the code to actually see that result. And as you can see, in my result array, I only have the result of the transform that returned a non-nil value. And the nice thing is that since all the nil values have been discarded, my array integers is now just an array of int and no longer an array of optional int. Now let's focus on this second transformation. For now, this transformation returns an array of arrays of characters. And as I've told you, I only want to have an array of characters as a result. And so this time, I need a transform method that will remove one layer of nesting in my return value. Or to say it differently, that will flatten my return value. And so as you can imagine, the method I'm going to use here is flatmap. So how does flatmap work? Flatmap takes a closure that will transform an element of the source array into an array itself. And then flatmap will basically merge all of this array into a single array. And the easiest way to understand what this means is just to run the code and take a look at the result. So this is the result value. And as you can see, flatmap has indeed flattened our result value, meaning that I no longer have an array of arrays of characters but instead I have a single array that contains all of the characters so all the characters of the first string then all the characters of the second string then all the characters of the first string etc. And so now we understand the similarities and differences between compact map and flat map. They both serve the same purpose of simplifying the return value of a transformation but they do it in different ways. Compact map is going to simplify the return value by removing all the nil values that a transform could generate and flat map is going to flatten the return value of a transform that takes elements and turn them into arrays. And before we end the video, I want to show you one last source of confusion between flat map and compact map. And that source of confusion is that as you can see, if I take my method compact map here and I replace it by flat map, I'm going to get a compiler warning. But if I run my code, you're going to see that the result is the same than when we were calling compact map. So this is a bit weird, but it's actually explained in the warning that the compiler gives me. The compiler tells me that flat map is deprecated. Please use compact map for the case where closure returns an optional value. And so the reason why it does work to use flat map instead of compact map is because in earlier versions of Swift, compact map was indeed called flat map. But then a few versions later, that overload of flat map was renamed to compact map because the Swift team understood that this name was actually very confusing. So if one day you take a look at an old resource about Swift and you see that the people are using flat map instead of compact map, well, now you will know the reason why. And that's all I wanted to tell you in this video. As always, if you have any kind of feedback, feel free to share it in the comments. For instance, if you know other syntaxes in Swift that look similar but actually behave differently, please share them in the comments because I would be super curious to learn about them. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.